morning and soon to be afternoon to everybody around the great state of Michigan. We're on the road, and this will be the last leg of a long string of road games. And we're in Gainesville, Florida, and we're taking on the Gators of Florida. Playing in a hostile, very hostile environment against this Florida team, which would love to have an upset today. And what this game feels like to me, having a noon start, it, feel, it kind of has a tournament-esque feel to it. So it's Ward and it is Hayes to get this game underway. Tip up and controlled by Florida. Here we go. Allen jump shot from the elbow. Two out in Florida. And that was quick. Kenny Goins has it. Shot clock at nine. He's at the elbow. Passes to Cassius. A long two. And it is good. Nice shot there from the top of the key by Cassius. Rebound Kenny Goins. Out to Cassius. Quickly down. In the wing, Langford, here comes the three ball. He got it. How about that? Wow, nice look by Cash as the defense came to him. Langford open in the corner. Late clock, seven to shoot. Goins lines it up. Goins steps out to hit the three. Now a bounce pass goes to Ward. Oh, a spinning hook shot's good. Wow, a terrific move by Ward down low. And they're going to get Dante Bassett with a foul. One thing for sure, we thought it would be up-tempo. It has been that. It has been up and down, but only Michigan State's been able to convert. And the ball finds its way out front to Ballard. He'll measure up a three and get it. Throw over to Kenny Goins. Down low Ward, who got right behind Hayes for the easy layup. Man, another beautiful high-low pass from Kenny Goins down to Ward. Michigan State led at halftime over Florida, 35-27. This half, despite... Only shooting 23% from four, three of 13. They've only been outscored by the Gators by two, 10 to eight. MSU one point led by 12, but Florida keeps hanging around. Langford comes to get it. Langford takes it. Long two for Langford. Boy, Michigan State needed that. He slipped, regained his feet. I thought he forced it, but he knocked it down. And now we got a game, 52-50. 450 left. Spartans by two of the basketball. And now to Langford. Barnes in the corner again. Other end. Barnes throws it in reverse. Five straight for the junior from Versailles, Ohio. The point guard out front. Breaks to the basket. He blows right down to the left. Winston picks up the trouble. Knocked away. Loose ball. Barnes has it. Barnes hammers it down. A two-handed dunk! And that was a disaster to turn into two. Can't believe it. Kyle Arnold has been the right guy at the right spot. Man. 63-59, a four-point game. Florida's got to score and score fast. This game is over. Florida got one shot at it. It didn't work, and time is up. Michigan State on the road against a packed house beats Florida. The final score, Michigan State 63, Florida's got 59. So I'm, I'm filling out the forms for colleges and uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be an engineer. I was like, I don't know what I'm good at because I spend all my time wrestling. I have pretty good grades and I know that I'll excel whatever I choose, but I was like, but what should I do? I tried, I tried programming many times before, but I had always just ran out of time or I was, wasn't as interested in it. But I was like, if it's a class and I'm gonna be getting graded in it, I'm gonna put my all into it. So maybe I should do computer engineering because I'll be an engineer and I'll be working with computers. And I was like, computers aren't, aren't going anywhere. Computers are only going to become like a bigger part of society as time goes on. And then cybersecurity is just because, I don't know, I feel like I've heard people say that tomorrow's wars are going to be fought, you know, like on the web. Or, and I think that there's some truth to that. So that's why cybersecurity is, is what I'm focusing on because it's going to be the next big thing. Parents always push me to do my best academically, athletically, basically in, in any endeavor that I chose to pursue. So always had had that kind of pressure behind me and uh, especially because both of them are both of them are doctors, so they're they're both pretty well connected in the school system. So uh teachers were kinda on me the whole time growing up. I feel like for a lot of people they have kind of like this competitive kind of a thing going on with their siblings, but me and my brother, we've always been very 
more like collaborative. We've always been bouncing ideas off each other, uh, trying to make each other better or trying to help each other any way that we can. So it was more of an internal thing. We both wouldn't be really good uh, at whatever we did. So just having each other to help us get even better, that was kind of like, we didn't really need the competition between each other as much as just uh, being there for each other. Okay. Go, 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 go. Yes, sir. It started off as kind of a thing where where my parents were like, hey, like, we don't want you guys just sitting around the house not doing anything. Uh, we don't want, like, we want you guys to be well-rounded. We want you guys to, to not live a sedentary lifestyle, basically. So we, you know, we start off, <laughs> I played a lot of sports and I come to think of it, not competitively for most of them, but like tried out a lot of different kinds of stuff. Did a lot of years in martial arts. Martial arts was one of the, one of the kind of mainstays. I started wrestling in fifth grade. I was at Kroger one day. I saw uh, my old martial arts teacher, a uh, dude named Master Han, and <laughs> talked to him for a second. He's like, yeah. He's like, uh, you know, Allie Reagan, because she's uh, she's like a really big wrestler. And he's like, Allie Reagan, you know, at some point, she specialized. She decided that she was just going to wrestle. And at some point, you got to specialize too. And that moment, I was like, all right, I'm just wrestling from here on out. Being able to make someone's day and make them smile, especially during the holidays, is something big. I know for me and I know for a lot of other athletes, especially in the hospital setting when you're kind of in critical times and I know most people don't want to spend their holidays worrying about their health and having their family kind of separated. So I think it's big that if we can go in and kind of change that environment for them and make them feel like welcome and happy and put a smile on their face, it's going to make a huge difference. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> You know, I mean, most kids, you know, kind of stuck in the hospital for the holidays, and it's a hard time for them, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time out of your day. You know, I mean, if you're just helping out for an hour, you know, it's probably an hour that you could spend, you know, maybe just if you're sitting on your computer. You know, it, it really makes a difference, and, you know, it's kind of a snowball effect. You know, if everyone keeps doing it, then it just makes a lot of difference around the holidays. Kissing and prancing and Jingle Bell Square in the frosty air. What a bright time, it's the right time to rock the night away. Jingle bell time, it's a swell time to go riding in a one horse sleigh. Giddy up, jingle bell. Around the holidays, we're really into family um, being our big focus and how we can help families in this time of need. So the first thing we do is the food drive. All the student athletes go out into the community with these bags and they lay them on front porches. We pass out over 2,500 bags to be picked up for cans and food. You know, I think it's important to give back because you know we're student athletes at Michigan State and you know kids look up to us and especially the holiday season you know put everyone in a good mood. It's time to um, be cheerful, be happy, you know give back. Yeah. Another thing we do is called Team for Toys. Every team gets a family from the Salvation Army, and we kind of make them our family. We buy them gifts, and we let them enjoy the holidays without having to stress about um, spending money for their toys that they are about to get because that should not be their worry right now when they need food and they need shelter and other things. Growing up, I was always coming from a family that could afford to give gifts for Christmas and that was a normal thing for me, so seeing that other people, other children don't have that opportunity to wake up on Christmas morning with gifts, it's very important to give back and make sure that people are having a great holidays, a great Christmas. They get that same feeling I had growing up. I was at the World Team Trial, like the Cadet World Team Trial Tournament, so like the Kids World Team Trial Tournament. I was in the quarterfinals and one of the club coaches who I trained under told Coach Williams, hey, you, you should go watch this kid. I think he's gonna be pretty good. By the time Coach Williams got over there, my matches had basically gotten canceled because I dislocated my shoulder in that match. So uh, so he got over there like right as I was being walked off the mat because my shoulder was out of socket. So he didn't get to see me wrestle, but he hit me up and he was like, hey, I, I didn't get to see what happened there, but uh, just wanted to let you know that we're interested in you. 
I would actually say that's when I realized maybe I, I, I would be wrestling in college because I always felt like I was good enough, but I didn't ever think I would get enough money to actually go anywhere and um, and do that. Then once I started talking to him I, and I started talking to all these other college coaches, I realized, hey, this this could actually um, this could work out. It wasn't necessarily one thing that stood out. I talked to the honors college people and they were like, yeah, you're, you're gonna end up making it into the honors college with your GPA, with your test grades. That was one of the big things that stood out to me was the honors college. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna get to choose like alternative courses and I'm not gonna have to take certain, um, like certain courses that the general student population has to take. I'll be able to substitute those with other things. And I, I thought that was really interesting. So that was a big thing. And uh, I, don't, I didn't actually spend a lot of time with the team on my visit because I was doing homework, but, but uh, doing like pre-calc. But um, the general feel of the university just, it looked really pretty. It was fall. Uh, I think, you know, leaves were just starting to change colors. There's no snow on the ground. <laughs> and um, so it looked really nice. I actually didn't know a lot about Michigan State until I started, um, until I started talking to Coach Williams the summer before. But I could tell that the team was working on rebuilding, and I could tell that that they were, you know, they were trying to get trying to get people to, to come in and help rebuild the program. And uh, I was talking to my host, and he's like, "Hey, we could actually do something." And I saw something in that, and I I uh, like that. I think these kids work really hard to be bigger, faster, stronger, certainly. I think we work really, really hard on the basketball court. We fuel their bodies, we worry about their nutrition, their mental health, all those things, but what are we doing to recover the body? When I had the opportunity to add something to the program, that was something I thought of, where we're actually healing the body, healing the mind a little bit, and that's where we came up with the recovery space. We have these zero gravity pods that are wonderful for just quick little naps, relaxation you can kind of pull around in front of you these vitamin D lights that really help with mood. And certainly when you're in a place where you have winter and it's kind of gray and dreary, it really helps. We have a massage table. And then last but not least, there's an infrared sauna uh, in there that seats up to four of our players. And you know, infrared saunas have a lot of healing properties. They help heal the body. So for me, it was just an opportunity to kind of add one more thing to that space that helps our players. During the season, you can get run down a lot. You just need like a space to get away from. Even in an apartment, you know, we lived we live with my teammates, so just to have a space where you can just get away from it all um, is is awesome. Pretty amazing, you know, to be the only women's team in the country to have a room like that. I'm, I'm lost for words to be honest. To have a sauna and those two uh, recovery pods is amazing. We can really tell by the end of the season, like when it gets to February and March, our bodies just start to be tired and we're exhausted. So something like this could be the difference and a close game at the end or making a run in the tournament. The drive gets underneath, handoff to Kane. She gets swarmed, but banks it off the window anyway. People like me who have a lot of injuries really benefit, regardless if you have injuries or not. Everything's Bluetooth, so you could just listen to your music and vibe out. This pot is just amazing because the sleep you get is crazy. But I was just knocked out, literally. It, it worked. They say it works for 20 minutes, whatever, and I was just knocked out. It felt like I was in here for an hour. The recovery room for us is another step. It's another level to what we can provide here at Michigan State. We really do care about the whole athlete. It isn't just about what can you do for me for two hours on a basketball court. I mean, we always push the envelope here at Michigan State. There's no question about that and in a positive way on cutting edge things. I'm so grateful for the, from the university and um, yeah, it's very, uh, very awesome. It feels like we're always working on something to make something better and then even when we have the best of the best, they find something else to improve somehow. Like it's like if it's not our locker room, it's another room that we need for recovery or you know Draymond's weight room. Like we had a weight room but he wanted a better weight room so it's like everything since I've been here, I've never been here without something improving or something being added and it's insane because it's like you already have so much and you're so lucky and then Michigan State just keeps taking steps forward and just proving why we're the best university.
Yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. All the student athletes come together. We're able to do this big fundraiser for the kids in need in the, within the community. It means a lot to these families that can't afford to go out and buy gifts. So for us to raise a little bit of money and be able to buy gifts for them to open up presents for Christmas is pretty cool. We have a big platform and there's a lot of us and it's great to see us all come together and even just to do something simple as go caroling in the hospital or get together to wrap gifts, it's great to see and I think we have a big impact on the community. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. It's just that this community gives so much to me and has built me into the person I am, it's only right to give it back to them. I mean, it's the holidays, and during the holidays, I just feel like it's a time when everyone expects family and love, and there's families that are torn, there's other worries going on, and if we can kind of take some of those worries away and make people feel that they're supported and they have people helping them, then it's kind of like, you can't not do it. <laughs> I guess there's elements of it that, that are transferable, um, what with Seeing, seeing like little tendencies. For instance, in the code, I might, uh, I might see that I keep doing like this one thing wrong. It might be the same thing in wrestling, and once I fix that, it's like aha, like your wrestling gets better. Whereas on the other hand, your coding gets better. I feel like there's a thing where everybody wants to say, oh, like I want to be the national champion, and that's your goal, and that's my goal too. But you, I kind of have another goal as well, which is just to make it look effortless. <laughs> it's kind of funny because to do that. You have to put in a lot of effort to make what you do look effortless. There's a quote, it's like a quote by Michelangelo. I think it's um, it's like, take pains to make something that looks effortless. I think that's the quote. And once I turn around, I start walking to the middle to put on my ankle band, it's like, it's almost like I'm a god. Like basically like that's my, like that's my circle and I'm gonna, I'm gonna dominate that circle and I'm gonna decide everything that goes on in that circle. I already knew beforehand that it was, that I'm really blessed to be here. But there was a moment this summer where I got to travel to Brazil. Didn't have to pay for it because like I made like the, the Pan Am team. So I, I just gotten back from that and I, I, I gotten two gold medals. And I was in the airport and I was just walking and I was like, man, I was like, not a lot of people get to do what I just did, get to travel, not have to pay for it. They get there, they do something they love. Uh, and I was just like, man, like I'm living the life right now. And, uh, and getting a, a nice education along with it. And I, I just realized how, um, how blessed I was, and I was like, yeah, this is it, like, I'm doing it. The toughest test of the season comes at home against the Oregon Ducks for the Michigan State Spartans. Spartans come into play today, receiving votes in the top 25 poll at 7-1. Winners in their last four contests. And for Oregon, they're ranked number three in the nation as they have been since the preseason poll. They are 7-0 and coming off a week off as a result of their finals schedule. So they are well rested and well prepared to enter East Lansing and the Breslin Center. The ball is tossed in the air. The tip is won by the Oregon Ducks. And here we go from East Lansing. Out to Cook, left wing three. That's no good. Rebound grabbed by Gaines. One dribble back up, and that's the first bucket of the game for Michigan State. Swarm doubled on the right block, gets underneath the hoop, puts up a reverse layup, draws the foul, and it goes in. Not the way you draw it up, but the Spartans will take it. Out ahead to Cloud, pushing the tempo. Nia goes through two defenders, lays it off the glass. Good, and the foul. What a take by the freshman. This is an Oregon team that's a legitimate Final Four threat. I think they're a legitimate national championship threat. Punch it, drops down. All five foot five of her getting the defensive rebound. And Allen trailing and knocking down the triple. Three point field goal by Jenna Allen gives her 11 points and makes it a three point game. Seven and one Michigan State. Seven and no Oregon, but Cutchin for three. What a shot. Michigan State looking for their first lead, and they'll have a chance at a four-point play. Just a dangerous weapon for Susie Merchant beyond the arc, especially in that trail, in that trail roll. Cutchin on the drive to the rack on the left side, too strong off the window. Put back by Gaines is good. Into Allen, 17-foot jumper, short. Holly the offensive board, the put back, and it's good. Spartans are really starting to win this battle inside. Allen, there's the double. 
fights through it. They've outscored Oregon 38-22 in the paint. Two and a half to go in the third. Here's Cloudon running in the lane, going right to the rack with the right hand, and she lays it in easy. A double-digit lead for MSU for the first time today. Pass underneath, it's bobbled by Gaines, saves it to Allen, topside two is good. 22 for Jenna Allen. Career high is 28 to Sydney Cooks, topside two. That's good. Sydney Cooks has had her jumper today. Touch to the top of the key, an NBA three. Bam! What a big time three by Taryn McCutcheon. Left around the screen, and Allen, right wing three. Book it! Game high, 27. Incredible offensive performance. She has her Spartans on the doorstep of a big time upset. Michigan State down 12 early, but in the end, celebrating a win over third ranked Oregon here in East Lansing. Statement win for Michigan State. Absolutely. Incredible win for them, the way they were able to put everything together. Big time performance from Jenna Allen. Not easy to do what they did. And the Spartans went head to head with one of the top programs in the country. And they come out on top, 88-82. The big shot coming from senior Jenna Allen, who scores 27 points, one off her career high. Put off in the offseason. Yeah. 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 Great stuff. Get out of these unis. Go enjoy it. Oh.